Welcome once again to Hot Sauce Done Quick, and for getting 50 of YouTube's best subscribers, I thought I'd do a little video about what makes hot sauce so great to all of us, that burning sensation, and how we classify it. Let's go back to the beginning, where it all started. People just eating spicy peppers, not caring about the classification of the piquancy or anything. It was the Wild West. Pure chaos. Anarchy. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Then, in 1912, some pharmacist named Wilbur Lincoln Scoville, which is the most Yankee name I think I've ever heard, showed up on the scene to invent a system to codify and graduate pepper piquancy. Before we get into the Scoville heat unit scale, a small historical tangent on Wilbur himself. Wilbur was born in Connecticut in 1865 to the Scoville family. You can find their entire genealogy online. Seriously, all 640 pages of it. There's no way I'm reading that. So if you'd like to look into it, be my guest. Links in the description below. Anyways, Wilbur doesn't do much of note until about 1895 when he releases The Art of Compounding, a book that would be in print for about seven decades. Side note, on page 111 of the 1914 edition, he mentions that milk serves well for covering the taste of sharp or acrid bodies such as capsicum. That turns out to be one of the earliest written forms of milk fats being good at stopping piquancy. Anyway, back to Wilbur. He started to work for the Park Davis Company, a pharmaceutical company in Detroit. One thing led to another, nothing was really recorded, and suddenly had a test named after him. The Scoville Organoloptic Test just rolls off the tongue. Great name, guys. This is where the tangent meets up with the aforementioned scale. Wilbur wanted to test his scale, so he got five guys, sat them down, and made them try dried hot peppers diluted in alcohol. Sounds delicious. Progressively, he would dilute the extract in a solution of sugary water drops until the peppers weren't spicy anymore. That doesn't sound fun at all. Sounds terrible, actually. Using these five guys' taste buds, he developed a graduated system based on the amount of drops. So a bell pepper equals zero Scovilles. A pepperoncini equals 100 to 1,000. A jalapeno, 2,500 to 10,000. So on and so forth. I'm going to explain why, you know, there's a big range in just a second. So you're thinking, good, well, we have a system now. Let's go categorize some peppers. Now we can measure them all properly, right? Well, hold those horses, partner. Those scientifically inclined who are watching are going to type, but this is all subjective. I must dislike, I must dislike. You're absolutely correct, but please don't dislike. The system is highly subjective because it is based on <clears throat> the person, their tongue, their eating history, the size of the drop, the type of the sugar, the sensory fatigue, peppers growing conditions, the regional differences within peppers, etc. Now you're thinking to yourself, that is a lot of systematic errors. And you wouldn't be wrong. The systematic errors go on and on and on. It wasn't a great test. Unfortunately, that's where we're stuck until about the 1980s. So for roughly 70 years, pepper companies were allowed to use this scale as fast and loose as possible, touting insane Scoville ratings, making people think that they're super spicy eaters and they can handle the hottest pepper. Let's talk about the 1980s. It was a wild time. Big hair, bright colors, codifying pepper piquancy more accurately. Humans had moved on from an eyedropper full of syrup. They now had computerized machines. They could now do a technique called high performance liquid chromatography, or HPLC for short. Basically, you pump liquid into an absorbent material and count the parts per million of the components left over. So, you pump your pepper extract into the machine and then you get a parts per million count. You multiply that by 16, and then you get what's called a pungency unit, which is one part of capsaicinoid per million of pepper mash. Then you do this formula, or you get someone else to do it because, you know, you hate math. And voila, you have your new scientifically accurate Scoville rating. Huh? What do you mean there are still systematic errors? What do you mean it's still totally subjective? Okay, well, ignoring all of that, let's look at some of the Scoville ratings now that we understand them. 
we can reference it to our friend, the jalapeno, as pretty much everybody has eaten a raw jalapeno at some point in time and said, oh, I'm so good at eating spicy food, just call me the spice god, birds eat this stuff, you know, I'm not weaker than a bird. Well, incorrect, bucko, you are way weaker than a bird. How about these peppers? The habanero, 100,000 to 350,000. Or this, the Carolina Reaper. 1.5 million to 3 million Scoville heat units, which is the same piquancy as pepper spray. And trust me, you're not tougher than pepper spray. So now you're saying, wow, that's hot, and I'm surely weaker than a bird. Again, you're wrong. They don't even have pain receptors related to capsaicinoids. Now, let's look at some stuff that isn't a hot pepper, that actually still can rate on the Scoville scale. Let's take vanilla, for example. Yeah, that vanilla. Okay, well, not actually that vanilla, but something called pure vanillin, or Nordy Hydrocapsation. That's hard to say. Nordy Hydrocapsation rates about 9 million Scoville heat units. That's not hot enough for you? Okay. How about Tiniotoxin? While having the cutest name, it has a rating of 5.3 billion Scoville heat units. Do not go to Nigeria and eat any of the spurges. The hottest thing on the Scoville scale that I could find was Resinifera toxin. It sits at 16 billion Scoville heat units. That's with a B. If you ingest it, it can be an effective painkiller due to the fact that your nerve endings are dying. So that was an overview of the Scoville scale, its history, its creator, and how it came to be. I recommend you still take every braggadocious claim by some sauce manufacturer with a grain of salt and caution. They're always trying to make the hottest pepper the hottest sauce, and they're willing to use a Scoville scale to sell it. You never know who has actually got their sauce tested. So, you know, learn who you can trust. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. This YouTube channel has grown in way larger ways than I ever thought it would. So thank you for the 50 subs and Here's to 50 more.